Jerry, would you like to stand up there? Or? Let me take this microphone. No, I guess I'll need that. I guess you will. Yeah. Right. Hello. 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 I, was yeah. here, I was here a couple of weeks ago doing a play, remember? Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 One of my plays. And, uh, uh, it was very tight up there, but we had an excellent audience, and this is a great audience for this event, which is uh, going to be fabulous. I have uh, hurt my, um, what do you call it, rotary cuff on the right, right side, so I'm like miserable right now. But, <laughs> but and here's, it, here's my sample of my writing, right, my writing. I hope I can read it. <laughs> uh, Lucy and Gary Morton come to town. Lucy's mother and stepfather came to New York to visit her. For some reason, I offered to cook dinner for them at my apartment. I am not a cook. My apartment had a door that swung shut as you left the place, like a hotel door. It had a fantastic German lock with a key that was four inches long and ratcheted. You could not know you had not know you had the key in your pocket when you went out, unless under great stress. I decided to cook something down home, a little soul food for Lucille Ball. I'm from Arkansas. Eggplant, fried, of course, and other stuff, which I bought at Zabar's, I think. Potato salad, maybe a smoked ham, it's all hazy now. I got home early from my matinee and laid the table. I only had three plates. <laughs> so I ran out and bought more from Conrad's. They still had the same permanent sale. <laughs> and I got one more chair from somewhere. I put out the silverware, the plates, the napkins, the condiments, including uh, my, uh, I am pretty sure, Tabasco sauce. <laughs> I made use of my two bowls for potato salad and green beans. <laughs> I had a cake from the erotic bakery across the street. <laughs> Not one of the penis ones <laughs> or anything erotic. Just a plain cake, maybe chocolate, that should be good. I had no dessert plates, but I figured I could wash their plates and silverware after the main meal and reuse them. As, uh, as I write this, I'm wondering what the hell I was doing. What kind of cracker nut would serve up such a dinner in New York City to Lucille Ball and the guy she married? A clodhopper from the Ozarks who insisted on being himself. That's who. Who wouldn't cater to who wouldn't cater I who, who wouldn't cater to my girlfriend's mother because well just because that's why right. <laughs> this is me I wanted to say I could have said it better say at Le Cirque or Raphael's or Le Alpi I knew a lot of good fancy but easy restaurants but something in me said I would like this woman Lucy's mother to know me, what I'm really like, how much I feel for her daughter. And it's just me, Arkansas boy, feeling it. Time was up, all was ready. I put on the eggplant to fry. I made the first plate of golden brown circles, perfect. I made a second plate full. I had some eggplant left, what the hell? Maybe Lucille would be hungry. <laughs> I put it in the frying pan on low. There were uh, 15 minutes from due. What had I missed? I checked the table, looked good. I thought kind of picnicky. maybe a watermelon. No, no, I've got cake. <laughs> OMG, wine, wine. I've forgotten the wine, OMG. There was a liquor store on the corner, 50 steps away. I ran out the door. I ran down the single flight to the corner, into the store. White wine, I yelled to Sam. What kind, he yelled back, back at me. 
I don't know. Who's it for? I, I didn't say Lucille Ball. <laughs> no way. A lady, I said. Take this. One or two, he yelled. Two, I yelled. He handed me the wine. I handed him money. I could have been buying raspberry slurp wine for all I knew, but I knew Sam. I ran out the door. The street was now full of fire truck. <laughs> One huge fire truck. Where's the fire? A, fu a firefighter came down my stairs and out the, the open the street door. I ran up to it. What's happening? Kitchen fire. Guy left the door locked. <laughs> we have to break the door. Which apartment? That one. That one. And he pointed up one flight to my apartment. I could smell eggplant burning. <laughs> the, uh, the pan burning. The truck's siren started going. A crowd began to gather across the street. Oh, Jesus. And my next door neighbor, same apartment, next building, opened my front door and stepped out. Smoke followed him. The fireman had returned with an axe, a very large axe, Paul Bunyan size. My neighbor held up my key. You left your key, Larry, he said mildly, and I, and I turned off your eggplant. It's pretty burned. <laughs> my God, I said, how did you get in? Oh, I smelled the eggplant burning, so I went out on my balcony. Our balconies were metal structures so closely joined that you didn't have to worry about <laughs> I stepped over onto yours, and I opened your kitchen door. It was unlocked, Larry. <laughs> I turned off the pan, and I saw your key, and I figured you'd forgotten it, right? Yeah. Jesus, man, thanks. Looks like a nice picnic up there, he said. <laughs> yeah, I said, nice. I, I forgot the wine. Okay, well, here's your key. Don't you hate these things? The firemen were clomping around, checking the walls for heat, looking at the ham and the potato salad. Should I invite them too? <laughs> and my neighbor? To meet Lucille Ball, the biggest star in the world? I looked at the time. It was time. My apartment was a haze of smoke. I could barely see across the room. But the fire was out. The pan was burned. And there would be less eggplant for everyone. But that was OK. I wouldn't, eat, I wouldn't eat my share. <clears throat> anyway, maybe uh, the firemen clomped downstairs. Uh, I, I'd make a picnic for them another day. Uh, <clears throat> my neighbor had been so nice and so pushy, I had to gently push him out the door. How did he know that I was going out with Lucy Arnez? He was, I learned, a Broadway gypsy. They know everything in the theater. <laughs> I swung my kitchen door with my front door open to clear the smoke. I could almost see across my kitchen when the downstairs door, street door, opened and Lucy ushered in her mother and her stepfather. I saw the top of a tousled red head. Lucille Ball is climbing the stairs to my apartment. She coughed loudly in the smoke. <laughs> what the hell is going on there? She growled. <laughs> it's all true. <laughs> Challenging, I thought. That was my impression of Lucille Ball's first look at me and mine at her. This was a woman who had seen everything and done a lot and was not impressed at this stage of her life with much, if anything. She gave the impression of a person waiting. For what? To be charmed, challenged, surprised? She looked a little like Lucy, 
but more like the woman carrying around the legend of Lucy. She was older at that moment, she was 68, and aside from her henna rinsed, carefully coiffed hair, her application of lipstick, which created a slightly different lip line than the one she was born with, and drawn on, too real to be real, but perfect, and perfect eyebrows, she didn't bother to disguise her aging skin. I like that. She had a smoker's premature, prematurely old and scratchy voice, which she used to command quite often. And she gave the impression of a person who felt she had to command or the world she inhabited would collapse. She was huffing and puffing from the climb and I sympathized with her. I was 45 and I bounded up those stairs, but I was sorry I lived on a two-level apartment with the entry on the second floor. Lucille sniffed the air. What's burning? <laughs> well, nothing now, I said. I was cooking eggplant for eggplant, she demanded. Yes, I finished my sentence for dinner. Huh, she said. Gary? Gary Morton had made it up the stairs with Lucy, who now introduced us all. I didn't look at Lucy. Her mother sounded angry about eggplant. <laughs> Even the idea of eggplant. <laughs> Suddenly, eggplant seemed to be one of the worst vegetables in the world. The whole idea of eggplant. Okay, I'm, I'm not a cook. I'm just trying to please. Gary said, Lucy, this smoke is bad. We should get out of here. Yeah, said Lucille. Maybe she was allergic. Okay. Uh, and the brief conversation turned to what restaurant we could all go to at this time where we could get a proper dinner. I wanted then to have a tarp to throw over all of the stuff I'd laid out. The cooked eggplant, nice brown in the dish, the deli stuff. Let's forget the whole event. What a messed up introduction. I might have thought I'd made a horrible mistake, but since I didn't, and hadn't, then I didn't feel like I had. Later, I got to know this was Lucille's reaction to almost everything. <laughs> anything, anything new startled her, and so she responded like someone jabbed with a pin. Anything new was not a good thing, couldn't be, had to be challenged. Halt, who goes there? Lucille was a sentry in her own life. Goes on. Thank you. This is from a memoir that I'm writing, and it's got so far about a thousand pages. It's going to have more. <laughs> and, uh, and it's called Famous Enough. Great. Thank you. Great.